Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Sean and I have too many books. And today I want to show you a set of five books all by Carl Edward Wagner that were published by Centipede Press. These were actually published back in 2015, uh, but uh, nine years later, Jared is doing a second printing of these titles. Uh, and actually, uh, as of the date of me posting this, the uh, first emails for the second printing should be going out this upcoming Sunday. Uh, so I figured I wanted to give you a little taste of what these volumes have in store. Uh, that way uh, you can decide for yourself if you, in fact, want to pick up some of these uh, Kane novels for yourself. They are very nice novels. Great production quality, as one can expect with uh, Centipede Press. Uh, now, Centipede Press has evolved a little bit over the past 10 years or 9 years. Uh, these ones don't have a top edge stain like a lot of their books do now. Uh, there is no blind stamping on the cover. This is very much kind of like what Centipede Press used to do. Well, you have this very nice, fine black cloth, uh, which picks up, you know, dead skin cells or my pasty white skin, as I say, uh, but nothing a microfiber can't, cloth can't fix, as well as some nice silver spine, uh, stamping on the spine there. But that's all right. You're here for the story itself. Uh, each of these novels, or should each of these books, because there's three novels and two short story collections, is illustrated by a different artist. Uh, so up first here we have Death Angel's Shadow, which is the first short story collection that Wagner published back in 73? 73, maybe? Uh, this one has artwork by Les Wagner. Oh my god, not Les, Les Wagner. Les Edwards, uh, also known as Edward Miller. Um, I got Carl Edward Wagner on the mind. Uh, these do have some interior illustrations as well. Uh, nothing, uh, like, overly abundant, but, I mean, especially, what, but it's more noticeable in the short story collections where you get a new illustration for not necessarily every story, but uh, close to it. Uh, so you have... You know, the same illustration there on the front of this piece, as well as on the title page. Uh, one thing that is different about, especially this volume in particular, is that the contents are going to be different than if you were to find, like, a first edition of Death Angel Shadow. Uh, it, I could be mistaken, but I believe the original Death Angel Shadow was actually just those first three short stories, Reflections uh, for the Winter of My Soul, Cold Light, and Mirage. Uh, a lot of the other short stories are published at other times, including in other collections. Uh, one of the things it does showcase is some of the original uh, cover artwork there, including some good Frank Frazetta artwork. You can never go wrong with some Frank Frazetta uh, showcased within it. Of course, you have some Les Edwards artwork, uh, just kind of glancing with the various short stories. Uh, so in addition to the short stories uh, containing, mo this collection containing more than just original short stories, uh, it does actually contain them in the uh, chronological order as well, which is something that uh, Wagner, according to Jared, Wagner had said he wanted to do, uh, but he, he never did prior to, you know, his passing in 1994. Uh, so, you know, it's almost the 10-year anniversary of this original Centipede Press publication. It's also almost the 30th anniversary of Wagner's passing uh, back in 94. Uh, so, you know, let's say you have art, artwork throughout. Uh, beautiful sewn binding to give lots of reading life to this collection. Uh, that way, if you have not read the Kane stories or Kane novels for yourself, you can do so uh, without fear of damaging the spines. You know, you can do so with very nice and very sturdy collections. Uh, what you should be expecting going into these uh, novels and short story collections is sword and sorcery at its finest. We're talking sword and sorcery, uh, almost like Conan the Barbarian, except with a much more devious hero. Uh, a, he's less of a sword and sorcery hero, and more of a gothic hero uh, thrust into sword and sorcery. Well, fun thing about these, as well, is I don't know why the flaps are so large on these dust jackets, but they are. Uh, so that's Death Angel Shadow. Let's move on to the next title, uh, which is the very first of the actual novels. This is Bloodstone. Uh, this was the first full-length novel uh, featuring our hero, Kane. Uh, this time we are featuring the artwork of Patrick J. Jones. One of these has a different 
interior artist, but it is not this one. Well, one of them, like I said, does have a different interior artwork. This one, if I recall correctly, I cannot show you the first illustration because it involves a little bit of nudity, but there's there's the end papers. And we're going to skip past the nudity. There's your Frank Frazetta original artwork. There is your contents, which is just the chapters because it is, in fact, a novel this time around. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know for certain if the reprinting are going to be you know, like pound for pound, the exact same as this uh, original printing. Uh, Jared has said in the emails in the past that that was the plan. You know, he, he wasn't planning on changing anything, so I imagine we can expect the same very nice, uh, I don't believe this is Japanese cloth, but it might be Japanese cloth, very nice uh, solid black uh, binding and material. I mean, same text blocks. Uh, what you might get is the biggest change will probably be on this, you know, this last page here, uh, where it'll say, this right here is first Centipede Press Edition. You'll have, you know, second Centipede Press Edition, or first edition, second printing. Not sure how uh, Jared is going to handle it. Uh, one thing I don't have is the slipcase that was offered. I, I got onto Centipede Press a little late for that, uh, so no slipcase for me. Next up is Dark Crusades. Uh, or Dark Crusade Singular, not plural, uh, with perhaps my favorite of the artists of all these. This is Tom Kidd's artwork, if you haven't uh, recognized that. Tom Kidd has an exceptional artwork style. Uh, he actually has the full wraparound artwork there. I mean, you can't beat Tom Kidd. He just does such a great job. Uh, one of the grails that continues to taunt me from afar uh, is... And this is not sword and sorcery. This is its own subgenre. Dying Earth subgenre is quite literally the titular title, The Dying Earth, by Jack Vance, that Subterranean Press did uh, years back, which was signed by Vance. There, of course, is Frazetta's original artwork. Uh, but Tom Kidd did the illustrations for that, and it just, you know, it taunts me. That's what it does. <laughs> uh, one day. One day I will find it for a price that isn't eye-watering, um, but it, it's it's a rare title. Uh, it's perhaps as rare as the signed editions of the Kane novels here. I mean, the, I will say the Kane novels will set you back. Oh, this was double-sided. Oh no, it's not. It's, it is, but it's just the same illustration in full. Uh, the Kane novels are going to set you back more if you were to find them on the secondary market with the first printing, uh, primarily just because you're getting five volumes in one. I mean, you're not really finding anyone out there usually who's selling individual volumes. I suppose it's possible. I suppose it's entirely possible that you could find uh, somebody selling uh, individual titles. But uh, most of the sales I've seen have been all of them grouped together, with or without a slipcase. Next up, we have Darkness Weaves. This, I think, might be the one with the additional artwork. Oh, no, nope, nope, this one is, uh, this one's Boko. Boko, also known by Brom something. Brom Sells. Brom Sells. He did the artwork here. Also known as Boko. Here is his Draw Me Like One of Your French Girl uh, illustrations. Look at that. Is that not mouth-watering in and of itself? That should sell you on the collection by itself. Uh, so, here's Boko's full dust jacket artwork. I guess technically it's not full because it does feed under the uh, the tabs a little bit. It's as full as it's going to get, unless you were to get a print without the uh, blurbs on the jackets. Uh, but yeah, I don't I don't think he's doing a top edge stain or like I said anything really different for the second printing. I mean, I suppose any it, it's entirely possible. Uh, I thought I read in one of the one of Jared's newsletters that he's actually he is having. You know, I don't think I've shown you these. Uh, each each volume does have a different image of Carl Edward Wagner uh, right on the uh, inside there, as Jared puts it, a handsome picture of Wagner. Uh, there's Rosetta's original artwork. Um, sorry, as I was saying, I thought I heard through the grapevine or in one of the newsletters that the uh, second printings might still be numbered, so they might actually have a limitation page, might be signed by the uh, 
the artists, which would be really cool. I mean, like I said, I did not, I did not have copies signed by the artists. Um, I don't know that I necessarily need to spring for it. I mean, it's really cool to have the artist signatures, but I do already own uh, the unsigned copies here. If anything, I, I might, I suppose, pick up the signed copies and then sell the unsigned copies so I don't have two of them, but uh, that is a decision for another day. And uh, even so, I mean, it, it, it'd be nicer to, I guess, have, you know, it's, it's a nice thing to have the uh, first edition copies, so maybe I don't need to justify picking up it, you know? Maybe it's a, that's a sign that I need to track down uh, these artists and get them to sign my copies all on their own. Uh, some of those will be a little challenging. Uh, and finally, we have Nightwinds, the other short story collection. Uh, this one is artwork by Grant Griffin for the Dust Jackets and interior artwork by Stephen Fabian and uh, some, art, some uh, Jim Pitts artwork in the back here. Uh, so Grant Griffin has the dust jacket artwork right there. Uh, just like uh, Death Angel Shadow, this does have content in it uh, that was not in the original short story collection. I mean, it does it does feature that original short story collection. Uh, it certainly does. There's your Wagner photo. Uh, but I believe... The last two, or maybe it's the appendix, a couple of the stories in here were not originally in Nightwinds. Uh, like I said, it was both a matter of compiling all of the pieces that feature Kane into this five-volume set. Of course, we have Stephen Fabian's artwork inside, which is a little bit different than Grant Griffin's artwork. You got more of a almost an Alan Kozowski uh, feel to it. Good old Alan K. At least with that one, because it's the Alan K primarily works with like black and white kind of line illustrations. Uh, when you get further in, you're going to see a little bit more uh, depth to Fabian's artwork that kind of branches him off from Alan K's artwork. But that first one definitely gives me Alan K vibes. Uh, Fabian, he uh, he definitely has the most artwork uh, compared to the other volumes. The other volumes, you know, as you just saw me flip through for 12 minutes, uh, you have several tales here and there. Uh, sell pieces of artwork here and there, but Fabian, he, uh, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna, oh, can't show you that one, I'm gonna just cram this thing full of artwork, and I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, but yeah, uh, this Sunday, this upcoming Sunday, what the hell is the date? Today is, what day is it today, the 15th? So Sunday would be the 17th? I, I'm trying to picture the calendar in my head. I don't have a calendar within viewing distance here. So, uh, yeah, Sunday, we're going to go with the 17th competently, um, is when the emails will be sent out for the second edition printings of the Kane uh, collection. And... I don't think it's going to be in the regular newsletter. Uh, it's just because there has been a lot of hype, a lot of people wanting a uh, wanting a reprint over the years that Jared has compiled his own interest list. Uh, so I believe it's going out to the interest list first. I don't know if there's going to be copies left over. Uh, there might be. Uh, here in the back, we are going to get to Jim Pitt's additional artwork as well. You know, I'm not. Re I'm not really sure why it's in the back here. It's almost like. Uh, Jared didn't know where to put it. Usually in the back, I mean, it, having extra artwork in the back is nothing new to a Centipede Press title. Jared's been known to put little appendices in the back, little collections featuring uh, archival artwork, including art galleries of sorts within the back. But it, it's kind of, it feels out of place within this particular volume, just because there's not really anything else to go along with it. It almost seems like he, he had hired Pitt to do this artwork. He didn't really know where to put it. He didn't want to put it inside any of the other volumes, so he kind of had a little bonus art section in the back. Um, so anyways, I don't know if any copies are going to make it to a public sale. Uh, it might just be stuck to whomever uh, is on that interest list. Uh, but if you do get a chance to pick up a copy, I'm, I'm keeping Tom Kidd's artwork, artwork out, because I love Tom Kidd's artwork. I'll put that on top of this pyramid I'm building. Uh, but if you get the chance to pick up a set 
uh, at a reasonable price, you should absolutely do so because it is high quality books. Uh, I mean, the price is definitely going to be higher now than it was back in 2015. I do not remember how much I paid for the set back then. Um, I bought it on, I believe it was a scratch and dent page Wait, once upon a time. Oh, you know what I also have? I also have these things. Um, I don't know if this, I don't know if this was actually, I never asked if these little stickers, and they are stickers, uh, I don't know if these originally came with the volumes or if it just happened to be like a little ephemera that uh, Jared had thrown into the package because he has been known to do that. He, you know, he puts little extra goodies in there. Uh, but I have, you know, five little stickers for the five volumes that he had uh, he had also included in the package. Uh, I can't say for certain that you're going to get stickers if you order the second edition set, but hey, you know, fingers crossed, maybe you can get some stickers. These stickers are almost 10 years old, so I, don't, I, I wouldn't hold my breath on that, but you never know. Maybe he has new stickers. Maybe he'll throw different ephemera in with your uh, your collection. Who knows? Uh, but seriously, if you get the chance to pick up this collection for yourself, I would highly recommend it. Uh, it, it is some very well... I haven't read all the volumes, but uh, it is some very well done uh, sword and sorcery. Uh, I mean, if you're a huge fan of if you're a huge fan of Centipede, hopefully you're already going after the light, uh, Fritz Leiber titles or the uh, uh, Michael Moorcock Elric titles. Those ones are hard to come by because those are very pricey. Uh, and if you have the Elric titles uh, and you're like, man, I need something to complement them on my bookshelf, these are can be a little bit smaller than the Elric titles. The Elric ones are oversized, but you cannot go wrong with Kane's uh, the Kane stories, the Kane collection uh, from Carl Edward Wagner. Coming soon to a centipede press near you, the second printing of these five wonderful titles. Uh, but seriously, uh, if you are not already subscribed to Centipede Press's newsletter, I would highly recommend subscribing to that, just because a lot of the titles do sell out very quickly, uh, and it can get you uh, early access, or not really early access per se, but access uh, at first crack at various titles like these before they sell out again. Uh, so anyways, thank you very much for watching. I've got plenty of videos on the channel here as I showcase various books from my collection. So please consider subscribing to the channel, and we will see you around next time.